Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for being here to listen to this panel about nanomedicine. Uh, we are proud to, uh, to be here to discuss these uh, fascinating topics with you. So let's start with a few in introductory words about this uh, nanomedicine field. Today, uh, the question will be around what is nanomedicine? Oh, thank you. Perfect. So what is nanomedicine? Where it goes? What are the challenges? And of course, we are open to any question in this room. So first, what is nanomedicine? I think what is the uh, easiest thing to do is to take the definition, some kind of official definition, and one is from the European Technology Platform on Nanomedicine. And at the end, nanomedicine is defined as any technology involving small size object. Object could be anything. Small size object that will help into the medicine field. And you have the exact definition on this slide. But at the end, when you think about nanomedicine, that's only nano applied to medicine. So what is really important in the nanomedicine world itself is medicine. Because you want to solve or answer an unmet medical need, and this comes from the medicine itself, not from the nanotechnology side. So what nanosize bring into medicine? What does it bring into the life science? At the end, you can see that there is two kinds of approaches when you think about therapeutic tool diagnostics. You have one that involves macro objects, and those objects, they can be uh, radiotherapy equipment, MRI equipment, surgery tool, and any kind of equipment that you could handle with your, with your hand or finger. And this is the macroscopic approach for therapeutic. therapeutic. And on the other side, you have the drugs, the drugs which are generally small molecule, a chemical or biological molecule, and that will interact with a biological pathway somewhere in the body to provide a benefit to patient. So what is so unique about nanotechnology is that you have an object which is in between two worlds. And this object is not a natural object. It has been manufactured like the macroscopic tool and will interact with the biology or with the cell at the level of a molecule. So you have a unique feature, unique object that could have some specific properties to provide therapeutic aspect or to provide diagnostic tool. But at the end, being nano is not enough. It's not because you're small that you're nano. You're nano if the fact you're small will provide some specific properties that you cannot achieve with other objects. We cannot consider that a nano-sized molecule is a nano-object or nano-medicine because by nature, such a molecule could already be nano. A typical nano-object will be an object that could exist in a bulk form, a form that you can handle with your hand, and when reducing the size of such object, then you will have something with different physical, chemical, physical, chemical properties that you could not achieve not being nano. And I think that's a key aspect of being nano. And what are the expectations for nanomedicine? Uh, you can look at this document, but also some other on the internet, where you will see that potentially nano will improve or already improving some medicine. It will improve diagnostic, making it faster, cheaper, uh, more sensitive, and a lot of other things. And when you see the nanomedicine field, at the end, that's a wide technology with a number of applications. And I will not go over all those applications. But it's not only drug delivery system. It's also microchips. It's also nanochips. But also some other kind of particle or nano object. And when you look at what is on the market today, you can see that nanomedicine is already here. It's not a phantasm. It's something which is in the market since quite some time. We can think about all the nano delivery system, but there is more like MRI contrast agent or other kind of objects that are already on the market today. But there is also a part that we maybe should take some time to look at. It's where the nanoparticle itself can become a therapeutic tool. No more molecular interaction involved. And most probably, that's where nanomedicine has something to bring into the therapeutic field. 
If you think about a nano delivery system, you're using a usual molecule that you would like to improve, either, uh, let's say, in terms of um, delivery, biodistribution, or bioavailability. So you put those small object molecule into a liposome, then you make it better. But still, the mode of action of such a product will be based on molecular interaction. And you could provide better output for the patient using nano delivery system. But if you think about a nanoparticle that could become itself an active principle, like playing on physical mode of action of such a nanoparticle, then you will open a new field for therapy or a new field for diagnostic. And most probably, that's where the nanomedicine has the biggest value to bring to, to medicine itself.